period. And when you consider the fact that CPD has already recovered 1,200 guns off the streets of Columbus so far this year, it's not hard to imagine why we're seeing the kind of violence that's been taking place. It's happening after midnight on weekends during the early morning hours when folks have been out drinking and they're hanging around, not going home. When one thing leads to another and trouble erupts. And since everybody in the world seems to have a gun these days, thanks of course to the most reckless and dangerous gun policy in our state's history, it doesn't take long before things can take a deadly turn especially in a part of town like this, where there are so often huge crowds of people. Contrast this to the morning, afternoon, and early evening hours. Contrast this to most days during the week, when the area is still bustling. But we simply aren't seeing the same conditions like those on the weekend that give rise to violent incidents. The enhanced safety measures we're announcing today are tailor-made to address the situation at hand, to disrupt a clear and emerging pattern of violence that is unacceptable. They're targeted, they're precise, and they're being deployed in partnership with residents and businesses throughout the area. This is what we've got in store for the weekend. Starting Friday night, midnight, is everybody's bedtime in the short north. Mama used to say, nothing good happens after midnight. And it's time for us all to step up and do our part to make sure we keep everybody safe. We're asking all businesses to voluntarily shut down at midnight. This is for Friday through Sunday only. We believe that all of us need to step up and do our part to keep our neighborhoods safe. We believe that all of this work is critically important to move our community forward. At the same time, I'll be issuing an executive order mandating that food trucks cease their operations at midnight as well. Council, under the leadership of Council President Hardin, will be taking on legislation this Monday, coming Monday, to codify that order. CPD will also be stepping up enforcement and manpower, resources, and patrols in the area until further notice. And again, targeting their efforts at specific measures designed to curb the violence we're seeing and wherever possible, prevent it from happening in the first place. To tell you more about these plans, I'm turning it over to our chief, Elaine Bryant. Chief. Good morning. Thank you, Mayor Ginther, City Council President Shannon Harden, Safety Chair Remy, City Attorney Klein, and Short North Alliance Director Betsy Pandora for standing with us in our efforts to protect public safety in the Short North. Violence anywhere is never acceptable. It endangers residents, visitors, and disrupts business in our city. This will be the only warning that you receive. We are leveraging all our resources throughout the city to ensure that safety is a priority. On Saturday, May 6, 10 people were shot in two separate incidents. Sunday, May 14, one person was shot and killed. Both times, officers were in the area when these shootings occurred. Violence in the short north or anywhere, it will stop. We will track you through data, targeted enforcement, and, put, and we will put resources where violence is most likely to occur. Today I stand here with the Short North Alliance and city leaders to announce safety measures that will take place in the Short North this weekend along with new strict enforcement measures. Operation Burnout is our effort to shut down street takeover events. For the last two weekends, we have successfully run Operation Burnout throughout the city and now we'll be bringing it to the Short North. Operation Burnout has led to 54 misdemeanor traffic citations, five misdemeanor summons, four felony arrests, three arrests on warrants, five firearms recovered, four incidents of drug seized, and 13 vehicles impounded. If we see you engaging in this dangerous behavior, we will seize your vehicle. This operation will put additional officers in key locations between the hours of 8 to 4 a.m. 
you will see officers in cruisers, on bikes, and on foot. Along with additional officers, extra lights and cameras will be placed in key areas. If you come here to disrupt and engage in illegal behavior, this is your notice. You will be held accountable to the fullest extent that the law allows. There will also be no street parking on High Street from Goodell to 5th Avenue from 10 p.m. to 7 a.m. and rideshare vehicles will only be able to use the curb lane and Coda bus stops to stop and pick up and drop off passengers. You've been put on notice and warned. Our officers are prepared to strictly enforce illegal, unruly behaviors, which include disorderly conduct, inducing panic, obstructing a city right of way, community noise, street racing, unnecessary schooling of tires, underage drinking, and violation of open container laws. We will also be enforcing, enforcing the city's curfew law. This means if you are between the ages of 13 and 17, you will need to be off the streets from midnight to 4.30 a.m. We are asking parents and guardians to enforce this in your household so we don't have to. These are only some of the measures we will be taking all summer long to reduce crime in the short north and across our city. This is something the community has asked for. We will use all available resources to make sure the people are safe that visit the short north as well as other areas in our city. Thank you. I will now like to introduce Columbus City Council President Shannon Hart. Thank you to our police chief, certainly to our mayor, to my colleague and friend, uh, chair of our public safety committee on council, Chair Emmanuel Remy, to our city attorney, to our neighborhood leaders, to Ms. Betsy Pandora, we say thank you. Thank you for standing strong. Thank you for your advocacy. Thank you for helping to create this premier district that we are in today. The truth is that we all love this city, our neighborhoods, our favorite spots to go out, listen to music, and to hang out and have a good time. But we also know that it can all be disrupted quickly by a few irresponsible people. So you heard the mayor talk about his executive order, and you will see a stronger police presence this weekend and going forward. I'm standing here today because we also need to recognize the human impact of violence on our city's soul. Every fight, every gunshot, every incident of violence hurts someone regardless of the neighborhood that it happens in. Our collective sense of belonging and safety is threatened when, our viol when violence hits our neighborhoods. In meeting and calls over the last two weeks, I felt the concern not only from officers dealing with bullets flying past their heads, but it's the public health workers and the licensing employees out checking food trucks. It's bartenders and waitresses. It's the 20,000 visitors of the short north, including visitors, as the mayor said, from all across the world who just come out to have a good time, to enjoy their friends in this beautiful city, suddenly worried about their safety and in danger. It's a terrible stain on our city premier destination neighborhood. This is on all of us. It's the residents, it's the people of Columbus getting pulled out of sleep to the sound of gunfire outside. It's traumatic. When those shots break out, it affects everyone. But the truth is, it's our police that have to respond quickly and come up with solutions on a moment's notice. We're here today for all of them because we have to rebuild those builds, uh, those bridges of trust between residents, between our officers and workers, our visitors, to keep us all safe. We need to move together against the few individuals who choose to cause violence in our neighborhoods. Again, this is on all of us. We know that 99% of the folks want to end the havoc, and it's the handful of those who think that life isn't sacred and that neighborhoods are their playgrounds for illegal activity that we are going to stop. So we're taking action against that kind of behavior, all while keeping this neighborhood and every other neighborhood welcoming to everyone. Because at the end of the day, this is everyone's neighborhood. All while collectively pushing back against violence, it will not be about targeting any one person or any one type of people. It will be about weeding out individuals who have been turning night, fun nights into deadly nightmares. 
This is an effort to make sure that all people feel safe and feel welcomed. What we will not do is turn this into a us versus them situation, a false choice with, fight, uh, with dog whistles and on old stereotypes. I think of the journey mural just down the street. It depicts one of our residents, Hodan Muhammad. It represents a journey from a new, from a, for a new resident from an old place, a neighbor coming into a welcoming city, making it her home, a place where she feels safe and belonging. That's what the short North is. That's what Columbus is. We are living through growing pains. That's the truth of it. No different than any many other cities that have gone through this. Columbus, we are a big city now. It's the truth, we are a big city now. But we will still tackle the problems like we always do, united and directed. We are sending a clear message today that it is not okay for a dozen people drinking publicly, flaunting drugs out in any neighborhood, or selling beers out of the backseat of their cars, trying to fight people while they walk by. It is not okay in the short north. It is not okay in Southfield. It is not okay in the hilltop, especially after midnight week after week. The short not north is not only a place where we will be standing up against crime. We will enforce the law uh, against all those who are misbehaving in every neighborhood. The police chief talked about that. Outside street parties and drag races are wrong in all of our neighborhoods. The loud engines and stereos, the three and four wheelers running through our streets and parking lots like they were out east last week is wrong and it has to stop. Every shooting in our city is unacceptable and it has to end now. The state legislature, as the mayor talked about, is flooding our communities with guns and letting them carry anyone carrying them. It's truly sick, actually, but they've tied our hands. So we are pleading with people, leave your weapons at home, not in your cars, not in your backpacks, leave them at home. This council believes that safety is a three-part strategy, prevention, intervention, and enforcement. Just as we are increasing policing across the city, we just announced $20 million in summer programs, programs in every neighborhood to help young people find a job, to finish school, to better themselves. The police will be doing their job to keep order, but we need all our local partners to play their role as well. Let's stand united to calm the streets so that we can have a safer, less stressful and deadly summer. The violence has to stop so the entire city can thrive and grow, so we can continue to enjoy all of our neighborhoods, our festivals, our bars, our restaurants, so that we can all be safe. Finally, I wanna hit on something that Mayor Ginther has been stressing for a long time, false choices. This is not a choice between the short north and other neighborhoods because the record clearly shows that we are investing in both prevention and enforcement in every neighborhood. This is not a choice between black and white because stray bullets choose no color, see no people. This is not a choice between food carts and bars and restaurants because we all lose when violence continues. And this is not a choice between the old short north and the new short north because we are dealing with our new reality that this is both a residential district and an entertainment district. Our laws and policy must reflect that reality. And council will stand with our neighbors, with our police, with our mayor, and with our businesses and our residents. This will be important as we pass laws on food trucks, on a new noise ordinance, on new zoning laws and more. Together, we will make a difference. We will make a difference because we will stand together. We will reclaim our streets. This is a moment of reckoning in our city and Columbus will meet the moment. It is now my pleasure to turn it over to my friend, our, fi our partner in fighting, helping us fight against uh, crime in our city and helping them move, forward, move it forward. My friend, Zach Klein. Thank you, Council President. Uh, to my friends uh, on uh, campus, the mayor, the council president, Councilmember Remy, 
the vision of police and executive director of the Short North Alliance, Betsy Pandora. Uh, like many of you, spend the past couple weeks not just hearing from neighbors and business owners in the Short North, but residents from across the city who have a heightened level of concern about gun violence and problems plaguing their neighborhoods relating to vehicular traffic, takeovers, ATVs, loud mufflers, and how that bleeds all into a threat of public safety. Folks are concerned. I understand. Folks are concerned. But there is a small number of people that are hell-bent on lawlessness and chaos that they think that they are above the law and creating havoc and ruining it for the 99.9% .9 of Columbus that is trying to raise their family, enjoy a wonderful neighborhood like this, and do the right thing. That's why we have to continue to support police and their enforcement efforts. That's why prosecutors have to step up and prosecute people to the fullest extent of the law, and judges need to understand to meet the moment when it comes to bonds and sentencing, so that violent individuals who are committing crimes in the city of Columbus and threatening public safety are met with significant accountability. I applaud the mayor and the council for the historic investment in people because we have to help people realize the opportunity and the hope that they have as an individual so they don't turn to a life of crime, so they don't feel dejected or this sense of lawlessness and emboldenedness to get attention and threaten others. And of course, we need the political will with our friends right down the street at the State House to step up and do the right thing and help us as a city and other cities across Ohio be able to have reasonable common sense gun laws that range from safe storage to something as radical as keeping guns out of parks. So from my perspective in the city attorney's office, we're going to continue our strong partnership with the division of police and its promotion of Operation Wheels Down and Operation Burnout. If you are driving your car recklessly, if you have a loud muffler or stereo that's disrupting the quality of life in our neighborhoods, this neighborhood or anywhere else in Columbus, if you're engaging in a street takeover, doing wheelies, threatening public safety, and of course adding alcohol, drugs, and guns into the mix, and you are caught, you will receive absolutely no plea bargain. You will eat 100% of the penalties and fines, including jail time if applicable. And we will take your car as evidence as long as you, your case is pending. And then you will go down to the impound lot and you will pay every single dollar to get that car out. We are not messing around because this threatens every single person across the city of Columbus. Second, through our nuisance abatement group, it starts with community complaints. In this particular neighborhood recently, we've heard about increased concern with neighborhood uh, parking lots where folks are essentially glorified tailgating with excessive drug use, uh, with violence, with alcohol. Uh, that is against the law. We have already reached out to parking lot owners to engage in a conversation with them about what is necessary to put that to an end. Whether it's a parking lot here or a bar on the hilltop or on the east side, we were not afraid to continue to file a record number of nuisance abatement lawsuits in order to hold business owners accountable for the nuisances that they're creating where violence is emanating from their, from their business or their place or their apartment complex or their building and spilling out in the th streets and threatening patrons or families trying to raise their kids in their neighborhoods. And finally, just this morning, we filed a lawsuit against the state of Ohio in the latest version of their uh, attempt to prevent cities like Columbus from passing common sense gun laws. We're not going to stop. We are alone in this battle against extreme Republican elected officials who have no regard for people living in big cities across the state of Ohio and how we tackle violence. As a matter of fact, they are obstructionists. They like tying our hands and asking us and blaming us to deal with this problem. You know what, it's a collective effort and we need them to step up to the plate. And as long as I'm city attorney, we're going to do our part to file every lawsuit that's necessary in order for us to have the ability to keep guns out of parks. 
to keep guns out of little kids' hands. We all saw the video from the last press conference. There's been many instances across the city recently that may be applicable to our safe storage laws where kids have shot individuals accidentally because they're six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 years old, but they're using their parent's weapon or a friend's weapon who's an adult. And we don't have the ability now because of a, of a ruling in Delaware County to enforce that particular law. And that's wrong. The mayor said it and I agree with you more. If you're not gonna help us out, at least get the hell out of the way so that we can help our citizens do the right thing to protect each other from out of control gun violence that's plaguing, plaguing our community. So at this time, I wanna bring up the executive director of the Short North Alliance, uh, who has done a wonderful job in building this special neighborhood. And she de deserves an immense amount of credit of dealing with the residents and the business owners, but she's a hell of a quarterback, uh, Betsy Pandora. Thank you, City Attorney Klein. Thank you so much, Mayor Ginther, Chief Bryant, Council President Hardin, and our city leaders for your incredible announcements today and for this determined focus on the safety of all in the short north. The last two weeks have been sad and challenging for all of us in the short north community. While the short north is safe, the vast, vast majority of the time, to have encountered successive weekends where we have experienced gun violence at these late hours hurts us all. As an organization, the Short North Alliance works to nurture the Short North as a vibrant, creative, and inclusive community. We convene conversations, we facilitate solutions, we share data, we lead programs and services, and we share our community stories. The Short North is a vibrant economic and creative hub at the heart of Columbus, and it holds significant value in our community. It embodies the smart, open, inclusive, and proud identity that defines us as a city. As of late, we have all witnessed incidents that have understandably raised valid concerns among Short North residents, businesses, and all those who visit and love the Short North neighborhood. Gun violence is a pervasive public health crisis that has become present in neighborhoods across the nation and Columbus, and the short north is unfortunately not immune to its impact. However, we must acknowledge that this complex crisis requires multifaceted solutions and recognize it is further exacerbated by state laws that prioritize gun proliferation over public safety. Unacceptable incidents of violence, including shootings, threaten the well-being of our community. The Short North Alliance is committed to further investment in safety programs and partnerships to address these challenges head on. Our organization in collaboration with our community has invested nearly half a million dollars in public safety programs through contributions from our small businesses and property owners, many of whom also personally invest in safety support solutions. We led the Short North Crime Interdiction Program, where special duty officers have worked over 4,000 hours and intervened in nearly 900 safety incidents, preventing an untold number of crimes. We've led 13 training courses on belonging and de-escalation for 123 employees of nearly 50 Short North businesses, and we have 14 more planned for this year. We've connected over 175 individuals experiencing housing, mental health, or addiction crises with services through outreach and social workers. We've educated about the importance of redrawing police precinct boundaries, noise legislation, mobile food vending legislation, and increased police cameras. We created the Short North Good Neighbor Pledge Program that includes over 100 businesses committing to be good neighbors in how they operate. We created a council on inclusion, diversity, equity, and access that has guided every decision we have made over the last two years to uplift broad and diverse perspectives in everything we do, including matters of safety. And all of that was also made possible with over a million dollars in grants from the city of Columbus over these last two years. But the severity of this gun violence epidemic clearly requires more. In the last week, we've spent dozens of hours convening conversations with constituents, residents, small business owners, late night operators, store employees, 
property owners, developers, patrons, and our amazing city leaders. And our voices are being heard. The Short North Alliance supports the need for these short-term measures, and we've heard consensus from many corners of our community on how these strategies may contribute to improved quality of life for all, prevent violent crime, and support the safety of this beloved Short North community. While we understand that there are no quick fixes, we acknowledge that there is urgency to protect what makes the Short North so special. We express our sincere appreciation to Mayor Ginther and all of our city leaders for their continued efforts and their deeply vested partnership. The Short North Alliance pledges to remain actively engaged and support the city's efforts in convening constituents, devising creative solutions, and building community support to implement meaningful change. Our unified goal is to make a difference and to ensure the safety and well-being of the Short North community. Thank you all for sharing that goal with us. Thanks, Ben. Appreciate you. Thank you, Betsy, for uh, all that you do. And you remind us that we all have a role to play in making our community safer. The police cannot do it alone. Community and neighborhood leaders cannot do it alone. We all need to do our part. We need the entire community to continue offering tips and information so we can get violent criminals off our streets. We also need the entire community to be vigilant and proactive to intervene wherever and whenever possible, as safely and as early as possible, before another violent tragedy can occur to them or their loved ones. This is a collaborative effort. We have a long history of partnering with broad coalitions to strengthen neighborhood safety, protecting residents and visitors alike. But our work isn't done. Recent events make abundantly clear the pressing need to do more in the face of gun violence. There's no one single course of action that will resolve all of our challenges overnight. But we can and we must do more to confront the horrific gun violence that is plaguing our city and other major cities across this country. This is just a start. Our work is ongoing and will continue to improve and adjust as we go. No neighborhood should ever have to accept gun violence as a way of life. No neighborhood in our city should ever have to endure its tragedies, wars, and hardships. We will not rest. We will not waver, we will not yield until this city, every neighborhood in this city, is part of the safest big city in America and we bring down gun violence and make sure that our children and families are safe. We'd be happy to answer any questions from the press. Steve, how long do you plan to have these initiatives in place? Is this something for the summer beyond that? As long as it takes you whatever it takes. We think the businesses are going to do the right thing. This is what's in the community interest, the common good. And if they don't, they will have the full and undivided attention of city, county, state law enforcement to make sure that everyone is doing their part to keep safe. We'll continue to work with small businesses and restaurants as we have for years. Uh, we believe that this set of unprecedented acts uh, are required to meet the moment. When 10 people are shot that we know of and 11 guns were covered that we know of from one particular incident, that requires unprecedented change. It requires some sacrifice. Uh, it requires us all to step up and do more to protect one another. But we remain committed. And if you take a look at our record from CARES Act dollars, rescue plan dollars, other investments we make in partnership with small businesses and restaurants, 
will stand ready. The best way for a business to thrive in this city and in any city is to make sure the community and neighborhood they're operating in is safe for their employees and for their customers. Chief, you want to take that? Of course, we're always uh, looking at our intelligence and trying to figure out who is actually causing the violence, but you also have to have probable cause <laughs> to be able to arrest someone. So we're doing everything we can from an enforcement standpoint and from a preventative standpoint and looking at these different groups slash gangs or people that are causing that violence and trying to make sure that we're doing everything that we can to get them off the streets. Several of you mentioned that a small group of people are behind most of the violence. Do you have any idea how many people we're talking about, their ages? So we're always doing our intelligence to try to update that information. There is a small group. We're talking about almost a million people here. We're talking a very small group compared to that number of actual residents or people that live, work, and play in the city of Columbus. And we are always constantly looking at our information to determine if there's something that we can do, if, there, if there's warrants, if there's uh, information for probable cause to arrest them. When violence occurs, we're always checking to see if these people are involved. We're always doing that. It's a con t continued effort we talking about how old are they well we're talking about a younger group of people for the most part you know that age can vary I, you can't lock me into an age it could be anywhere from 15 up to 24 to 26 27 but we are talking about a very small group of people and that fluctuates between the people the ages so we're always constantly uh, looking for new information and updating that information do you have any concerns that with the businesses shutting down here in this strip that that small group of people will just take it down a few blocks or a few blocks that way? And if so, what are you going to do about that? So that's the, the, be the beauty of a plan like ours. We are fluid. We, we are consistently looking at our data and we're moving and we're uh, addressing the concerns in every single neighborhood. But just like the mayor, city council attorney said, the incidents that have occurred in the short north over the past couple of weeks, uh, mandate that our attention is to make sure that we are addressing the issues and the concerns here but we're going to always be looking across the city operation burnout didn't start here we've been doing this operation as well as other operations operation unity operation wheels down strict enforcement safe street so this is just one of the many things that we're doing to ensure that we are addressing the concerns of the neighborhoods confident that these new initiatives will bring people back to the short north who are now saying you know it's too dangerous I am confident. I think that if we do the things that we're supposed to do and we continue to enforce the laws and have the, 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 the backing of the community, the backing of the city leaders, that we will definitely see that turnaround. Folks who hear what you're planning to do and are still sitting at home saying, ah, I don't know if I can come down there yet. I want them to trust that we're going to make sure that we make this place a safe place for them to come visit like they always have. That small uh, window and that small time when we have that lawlessness and people that are down here not patronizing the businesses. These are not people that are patronizing businesses. These are not people that are coming down here for the right reasons. So we're addressing our concerns for the people that are here for the wrong reasons. We want to make sure that we are taking them off of the streets. We want to make sure that we're making sure the people that want to come down here and patronize businesses want to come down here and have fun, have the ability to do so without worrying about that. FIFA patrols and people on the streets, can you give us any numbers? How much? I can't give you any numbers, <laughs> but as you know, summertime is always a busy time across the city. So our focus has always been to ensure that we have the right amount of personnel and not only the right amount of personnel, but ensuring that they are being utilized to the best of their ability to be to make the city safe. Concerned that by adding resources, focusing on the short north, that it might leave other areas of the city vulnerable. No, and that's why we talked about our different operations. Operation Burnout has already been in existence, and it's a roving operation. Um, operation Unity has been in existence, and it's a roving operation. We look at the data, we address the concerns where they need. But you also have to remember, these are just strict operations that we're doing. But we also have patrol that is standard across every single neighborhood. We also have uh, our initiatives, like I said, safe streets and things that we're going to be doing. So we are not just looking at one neighborhood. We're looking at our entire city. But again, when data shows us what we need to focus our uh, efforts and information on a particular area, we're going to make sure that we do that to address the problems. Chief, this might be a question for you or for you, Betsy. 
closing time when Ubers are coming, that tends to be a hectic time around the short north. Now there won't be any parking, which might, I don't know, will alleviate some of the crowdedness. Uh, but with all the people coming out of bars at midnight, stopping food trucks, how are we going to control the people who are just looking everywhere to find their Ubers from maybe getting out of control? That's why messaging is important. And there has always been a thing in place where the Uber drivers and Lyft drivers were supposed to meet them at the Coda bus stations. They just didn't follow that. So it's important for us to enforce the, uh, the, the rules that were already in place and that messaging even with the businesses, with uh, the executive director and with the police to making sure that they understand and know where they can meet their Uber drivers, making sure that we are enforcing that and making sure that people are getting to those drivers. We'll be directing that. Absolutely. We'll be messaging that and we're asking, we're putting it out now, we're asking that people know that and when they come down be prepared to, do, to go to the places that are designated. We're so grateful to the mayor and the Department of Public Service last year for putting a pilot program in place where a geofence um, directs people who are picking up a rideshare vehicle at eight different locations in the short north. Um, it's, it's worked well. Um, it's fostered safety. And um, we think that system is going to be a meaningful and good system. Um, with that, there are also going to be more opportunities for those pickup locations because of um, the parking restrictions that will be put in place. So we're, we're pleased with the strategy and we're excited about how um, it will be used. Do you have a number, that, that's, do you have a number or percentage of businesses in the short work that you expect to be following this voluntary curfew? You know, your question, great. Um, uh, this is about partnership right now. And so, you know, we're, we're really appreciative of our city leaders for coming together and, and looking at this from so many holistic ways. Um, and this is a time for partnership. So we'll be encouraging that partnership. Are you reaching out to specific businesses or are they all alcoholic establishments? Are they late night eateries? Are they business trucks? Well, the Short North is um, a vibrant and diverse business community. There's over 300 businesses here. Uh, about a third of them are eating and drink drinking establishments. About a third of them are service-based providers. And about a third of them are retailers. So um, we share information with all of those businesses. And we look forward to their being partners in this effort. This is a lot of information we're throwing at folks a day before this all goes into effect. Is all of this on the city website, the police Facebook page? Where can people get all this information so they know what's going to happen tomorrow? Yes, we're, we're going to be messaging. Uh, we've already started today. We're going to continue to message the things that we're going to be doing from an enforcement standpoint, from the city standpoint. It's going to be on their website as well. So we will put that out. But we want people to understand this is not just a weekend, one weekend thing. We are expecting people to understand that throughout the summer and as long as necessary, we're going to make sure that we put efforts in place to ensure that people are able to come down here and enjoy themselves. This is a place, Steve, where uh, we need your help too and providing this information, getting this information out to the public so everybody can stay safe. Yes. Well, there, uh, you know, probably a couple of different definitions. I might leave it to uh, a lawyer, uh, you know. My wife always likes to say I practice law without a license every day, but I'd probably rely on the city attorney and the police chief. Uh, I think most commonly defined as either guns that have been used in illegal activity that are part of a gun trafficking network. I mean, oftentimes you have guns that are purchased in certain places around the country that are trafficked and sent to other cities where crimes are committed and then they're shipped off to other places. That's one of the reasons we asked for the federal government's partnership there. And luckily we now have a permanent ATF director, Steve Dettelbach, who's been to Columbus a number of times, most recently a couple of months ago, that's helping us step up our investments in NIBIN and other types of things to try to really disrupt and stop the, the flow of illegal crime guns in our city from other places around uh, the country. But Chief or City Attorney, any of you think Sure. What we're essentially talking about is possession and sale, right? It's uh, getting it and acquiring it through a means that's illegal, uh, and then it's uh, possessing it and you're a person that's illegally prohibited from possessing the gun. Uh, and then, you know, those are the end of, when we say illegal guns, that's essentially what we mean. I want to, I want to piggyback off something the chief said about, you know, the fact that the short North's focus today, uh, or this weekend with, uh, the operation burnout and wheels down 
Like we we have a, a wonderful partnership, and we've talked, and, and I've instructed uh, my prosecutors, and she's instructed the chain of command that if these burnouts take place at any time in our city, these ATVs and street ride joy rides that are dangerous and threatening public safety takes place anywhere in the city of Columbus. They have a way to mark on their ticket so that our prosecutors are alerted that we will offer no deals. So yes, the, the focus of the operation may be the short north on a Tuesday, but if an officer on patrol in, in Linden or the Hilltop sees that same, evidence, or same activity going on on a Thursday, it's all part of the same global operation of zero tolerance for this lawlessness and chaos. Uh, and we will hold those individual, individuals accountable. Uh, we will take their cars for the duration of the case. Uh, and then they will eat every single dollar of fine, which could be hundreds and hundreds, if not thousands of dollars when you throw in the impound fees and face jail time, depending on what the activity they did uh, that caused them the criminal violation. So this is, this is a focus on the short north today, but this is an ongoing operation, as the chief alluded to, that has already started in the city of Columbus and will continue to send a message to these folks that the chaos that they are creating at the expense of law-abiding citizens is over. The time for accountability is now. Thanks, Chief. Thank Thanks, you. Mayor.